Gregoriti Stachiti, Entapisti, Andrezite, Carteuste. It's a verse in scripture that is written directly to every one of us, every man out there. The verse is found in 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch out, stand firm in the faith, act like men, and be strong. It's a direct commandment. Now, some translations will read that last little bit. They'll leave the act like men out and then say, do everything in love. And I believe that those two things are synonymous with that command to us as men. We are to stand firm, to watch out, to do everything that we can within our ministries in love. It's important for us to engage in that fashion, for us to stand up, to be ready, to take the posture of a man who is prepared and ready. I know a lot of you guys, military, uh, played sports. What is the posture of an individual who is ready? What is the posture of a man in the military ready for an offensive or defensive measure? It's a posture of readiness, right? Widened stance, feet back, mind is sharp, eyes are focused. And for a lot of us, we've lost that edge, whether it be a out of season time, whether it be something that's kind of tripped us up in our lives, whether it be an addiction to something online we shouldn't be watching, whether it be alcohol, whether it be an extramarital relationship. Some of us feel like we are um, unqualified to lead uh, or that we are unable to. And let me remind you that God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. And as a man, you're called to lead your family, to lead them well. You're commanded to stand firm, stand up, and be watchful by this verse, 1 Corinthians 16, 13. We're going to peel back a little bit of this, and I just want to encourage you guys really today. We're not going to unpack a huge section of scripture or anything like that. We're not going to go verse by verse. I really just want to pour into your hearts today. I want to shake you up a little bit. I want to stir you up a little bit and get you to move forward and refocus with discipline in mind to look ahead at the future, to look at your families, to look at the ministries in front of you. I'm not talking about church ministries. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your circle of influence in your life right now. When I leave this room and I go into the other room, my family's in there. That's my circle of influence. That's my ministry right there. Now, I need to be focused on that first. I need to start in Jerusalem and work my way out. So i got to start here in the heart and go there. Let's pray before we get started. Lord, I ask that you would bless this time. Father, I ask that as we look at some of these verses in Scripture, that you would help us as men be strong and courageous, that we would understand your plan for us in what you're doing, and that we wouldn't try to squeeze you into our lives, that we wouldn't take a little bit of Jesus and season our lives with that and call it good. Father, I pray for every man that's listening. I pray that you would breathe that spirit of courage into them, that spirit of power, that spirit of of doing everything and all things as a man in love, to stand firm, to be ready, to be courageous in our marriages, in our relationships, in our own devotional time with you. Father, I pray that you would strengthen us. I pray that you would raise up a generation of men that would stand on the front line, that would be ready to storm the gates, that would push back the gates of hell for the sake of the cross and for you, Lord. Father, we love you and we give this time to you in your name, amen. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. One more time. Gregoriti stachiti, entapisti, andrezite, carteuste. Stand firm, act like men. Do everything in love. Why? Why is that important? Why is it important for us to stand firm? How come I can't just, how come I can't take a break and watch the final four? I mean, it only happens one time a year, right? This, have a wife lay off a little bit, I'm gonna kick back, watch the basketball game, I need a break, I've earned it, right? No, you haven't. As a soldier of Christ, as a follower of Jesus Christ, we are commanded to continually and perpetually always be watching out with the eyes of vigilance. Firstly, for our wives and our future wives, what if you're an unmarried man? What does that mean to you, right? There's an amazing verse. If you go into Song of Solomon, flip with me over there real quick. Song of Solomon, chapter two, Verse 3, on my wedding ring right here, when I got married just shy of 10 years ago, my wife, 
put an inscription on the inside of this. And it's a constant reminder of this verse for me. Song of Songs, verse, or chapter 2, verse 3. Like the finest apple tree in the orchard is my lover among the young men. I sit in his delightful shade. As a man who's married or a man who's going to be married, it is your job to provide that safety and that security for your wife, for your spouse. Okay, it's your job to, to rule your household in love so that she can sit in that shade, so that she can rest in that comfort of you, that you are standing firm, that you are focused, that you're being vigilant and aware of what's going on in the world around us. Secondly, for our kids, I have two beautiful children. Um, I have a little boy who's seven, and my daughter is four, uh, and they're amazing. They're amazing blessings and gifts from, God's, from God. Um, they're just incredible. And I tell my wife time and time again, if it wasn't for her and the kids, uh, who knows where I would be right now. But we all know as men, if you have children, that your kids will watch what you do and do that before they listen to you. All right, it doesn't matter what we tell them, doesn't matter how we train them, doesn't matter what we say to them, they're going to watch us. And as a man of God, if we are not emulating that. If we're not leading from the front, if we're not situationally aware of what's going on around us, if we're not standing firm in our faith, how can we expect our kids to do that? Proverbs 22.6, we all know the verse, right? Train a child up in the way they should go, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. Now, I know we all have wayward kids. It's all up to us individually to make a decision to follow Jesus Christ. But it is our job as men, men of God, to train our children now so they have the tools and they have the necessary instruments to make whatever godly decisions they can in the future. I've started training my son. He turned seven. Um, and I made a deal with my wife when we, when we had him that when he turned seven, we'd start training him in jujitsu. And we sent him to a jiu-jitsu gym, got him a great instructor. I figured if it was good enough for the Spartans, it's good enough for us. This is our way of sending our son to the Agogi. About three days a week, he goes to a jiu-jitsu gym. I have a reading program set up for my son Monday through Saturday. We cover science, ancient history, we cover biblical topics, we cover apologetics, just for 15 minutes every night, nothing intense. But that's how we start our incremental training with our kids. We have to start training them in the way that they should go. We have to give them reasons to believe in this God that we worship. So much of the culture has turned it into a fairy tale. People don't come back from the dead, right? You can't heal somebody by touching them. Well, Jesus did that. We have to make that 18 inch gap from the heart to the head. We have to make it logical. We have to make it make sense to them. We have to explain it. We gotta give them an opportunity to open up and ask questions. That's your second reason why it's important for us to be standing firm, to be ready, to act like men, do everything in love, and be ready to roll forward. And lastly, for yourself, the only thing, listen to me, the only thing that matters in this life is your faith and your trust in God. That is it. It doesn't matter if you're going to retire. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. It doesn't matter if you're a trash man doesn't matter. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is your faith in Christ. That is the most central thing in your life that will be the biggest decision you will ever make. I said it before, part-time Christians don't beat full-time devils. Look, the devil isn't out there to wound you, okay? He's not looking to put you on the sideline for a little bit. He's looking to take you out of the game to end your career. And as Christians, we should be doing the same thing, finding that sin in our lives, hunt that trash down, and get rid of it. And it's gonna take discipline. And it's gonna take time. The devil comes to rob, kill, and destroy in that order. To take away, to murder you, and to destroy your life. And if you slip, if he catches you slipping and sleeping, that's exactly what's going to happen. You know that they have a Google list right now out there of all the fallen pastors. You can look it up by year, 17, 18, 15, all the pastors that had fallen. How many pastors fell during the Ashley Madison scandal? Remember that one? 
the call girl thing. They released the list. It was hacked. And they released the list to the public. And how many pastors' careers, and men's careers, and marriages and families were wrecked because of that list. And rightfully so. Okay, that stuff needs to be brought into the light. It needs to be exposed. It needs to be shown. Great healing can come from that. But how great is it to have a man who sets his mind to a path, who sits down and commits himself to something and never strays and never veers away and continues until he reaches that goal versus the man who stumbles, reacquires his target, and moves forward. Listen, gentlemen, there's so much at stake here. I want you to stand firm for the glory of the Lord and for the hope of the nations. Stay the course.